You know, I'm curious about why we don't give the light a little bit more thought. You know, it's affecting every single cell in your body and brain right now. It's been doing it since you're about 16 weeks old in the womb. It affects how you feel, it affects how you look, it will even affect how much of this talk you remember. Yeah, most of us, it's just boring old light bulbs, isn't it, really? And certainly, I thought it was too, until I was a bit late cycling for work, hit a patch of grease, smack, fell off my bike, smacked my head, smacked my helmet, and when I came round, it was pretty clear life was never going to be the same again. You see, the switches between my eye and brain were completely fried, and my sensitivity to light was off the scale. And those of you who sometimes suffer from migraines will know a little bit what I mean, but just being in a regular office was like being in a nightclub with jet lag, having had a raging argument and a bit of flu. It was just overwhelming, stressful, exhausting, painful. It was tempting to just draw the curtains and just switch off. But I was really lucky. I had the most amazing team around me, including a neurologist. And through long, dark years, I had to retrain all those switches. And I set up a residency at the Bristol Eye Hospital. I took a PhD. I even trained as an electrician. And I became fascinated by just how powerful light is. In particular, I learned all about how light affects your body clock, how it makes it tick. We're only just beginning to understand a little bit about that, but before you, the alarm clock even went off this morning, it had shifted your blood pressure, your core body temperature, even the thickness of your blood so you're ready to get up. And by around noon, it shifted your metabolism, your working memory, your muscle tone, so you're ready to get out there and take a giant step for the team. And as the night falls, it gets ready to flip that incoming data stream to review what you've been up to for the day, to log the memories you need, to clear out the rubbish, and then to flood your body and brain with growth and repair hormones too. Now, scientists have only discovered about 20 years ago, 15 years ago, the part of the brain, it's a tiny little thing right in the middle of the brain, super protected in there, protected by your skull and hopefully by your cycle helmet. And it's dark in there, so the only way it has any idea what's going on, what to do next, what, whether you should be out there or sleeping or whatever, is signals coming in from the outside world that might be other people to work with, it might be food, it might be exercise, but the single most reliable universal signal, and one that we share with plants and plankton and even puppies, is the amazing difference between bright days under the sun and dark nights under the glimmering moonlight. Now, when that central system doesn't know what's going on, either because the difference between day and night isn't clear enough, or because things are coming in in a funny order, it starts to break down. You might have had a feeling of what that's like if you've ever had jet lag. You sort of feel a bit blurry brain, find yourself craving comfort food and funny times of the night. Trying to drive after just 16, 17 hours without sleep is the equivalent of driving under the influence of alcohol. Now, we get over it quite quickly, but over time, it's quite literally a killer. All of those mini-symptoms actually embed themselves in the body, and we see a rise in depression, obesity, heart disease. In fact, the WHO has classified disruption to your body clock as a probable carcinogen. Now, that's not really a problem if you set your body clock correctly, but the real problem is that the homes where we live our lives simply don't give our bodies the bright, dark difference that we so desperately need. During the day, it's a fraction of the light it is outside. In the evening, it's hundreds of times brighter than outside. And then at night, a lot of us leave the lights on because we're scared or we keep on checking our emails late into the night. So our bodies just are starting to break down. If you get outside, it's fine. But the problem is that one in three people in elder care people in elder care homes in America will not go outside this month at all. One in five children will not go outside to play today. And that sounds extreme, but actually, we aren't much better. Adults spend less than an hour a day outside in, on average. That is less than the United Nations minimum for somebody living in prison. So we need to do something about that. And we can all go outside, fine. But through lockdown, I saw my beautiful nieces and my amazing goddaughter 
locked inside and perhaps you were there too with the curtains drawn, trying to learn on Zoom, trying to log in on social media at night. I saw their body clock start to break down. And I was desperately worried because I know how important those vital growth years are for that, for everything to set up correctly. I spoke to them about light and whether that might help because I knew it could. And they said, no, they don't learn about that stuff at school. It's boring anyway. And their parents had no idea either. And I thought, well, no, surely, surely somebody's been thinking about this already. So I got online and I came across NASA's space program. They're investing billions of dollars. And of course, it makes sense because they're locked up with, with the lights on all the time. They certainly don't get out much. And as they zoom around the moon, they see 16 sunrises for every one of ours. That's like video games on speed. So amazingly, the, the scientists who work on the space program, they weren't doing anything because they weren't jetting anywhere either. So they answered my emails and, and I was able to speak to them and learn about how this stuff really works. And then they introduced me to lighting manufacturers who are starting to build new ways of lighting spaces based on their findings. And then I met some amazing businesses who were harnessing that to create healthier, happier spaces too. So I spoke to the clinical director of a neonatal unit who is using light to help those premature babies who've been fighting for their lives suddenly start to grow and to thrive. I spoke to a school for children with, um, who struggle with hearing. They were finally able to lip read more easily. I spoke to an industrialist in Norway whose teams were so chuffed with the lighting in the office that they actually invited their friends and family around to come and have a look. And, and I actually spoke to an amazing chief executive of an elder care home in Warwickshire who was using lighting to reduce the distressing sun, agitation and the sundowning that happens at about five o'clock in the evening. So I knew it worked. I knew there was something I could do about it because I didn't want to just scare them. And so together as a team, we set up a social media campaign for teens about how light could help them. We've reached two and a half million teens and counting. It's been translated into, two into a number of different languages and it's always just so humbling when some, a teenager from across the planet reaches out to let me know that they've been outside, they've drawn the curtains, they've taken their grumpy old parents with them too, and they're starting to see the difference. So I'd love to share some of those very simple tips with you too, just in case they're useful. So the first is very simply to let your body clock know that it's time to be up and about. That means giving it a burst of bright light first thing in the morning if you possibly can. It's not picky about what kind of light it gets, it just needs to be bright. You might not be surprised to know though that sky blue wavelengths, the cool wavelengths that we get from natural daylight during the day, seem to trigger the biggest response. So obviously protect your skin and your eyes from burning, but harvest every spare photon that you possibly can from daylight, something those astronauts simply can't do. Get outside if you can and then sit close to the window and then boost with those bright, energy-efficient light bulbs. If you bounce them from the wall and the ceiling, you get that uplifting sky dome feeling too. You will feel more alert, you will, will, accuracy goes up, reading speed goes up. Surprisingly, you will even find it easier to go to sleep at night if you get a burst of light in the morning. Now for my second tip, which is to allow your body and brain to get ready for sleep because that focus setting is like a cup of coffee for the brain. It takes about two hours to wear off. So switch from bright daylight, active time, to soft, warm glow. Think campfire glow. So dim, warm light bulbs. It's amazing what a difference that can make to your physiology too. We physically feel warmer in a warm light. We find it easier to be creative and more collaborative. We even find it easier to resolve conflicts in soft, warm light. And Lord knows we could do with some of that right now too. So that's my second tip. My third tip is actually not about light at all. It's about darkness. You see, that part of your brain is evolved to keep you safe and it's on the lookout for any, any sign that it should be about, and particularly light. So draw the curtains, use blackout blinds if you need to, and switch off the lights. We know that even an overhead light or an e-reader or a bedside light is enough to reduce the quality and the quantity of your sleep. It can even increase your likelihood of heart disease and obesity and depression. So 
if you get it right, if you allow your brain to go into that deep sleep that it so desperately needs, there are some parts of the brain which are actually more active at night than they are during the day. You might not be surprised to hear that. You can actually boost your memory by up to 40% if you give your, let your brain go into that deep sleep. And that's surely got to be worth a try. I hope you can see that harnessing the insights from the space station is not rocket science. You really don't need a, a NASA-sized budget, but you do need a NASA-sized vision for a healthier, happier, and more sustainable future for us all. Thank you.